In this video, we're going to talk about some strategies for safe use and proper monitoring of lamotrigine, given all these concerns about potential cardiac issues and given the FDA warning. So as a reminder to summarize, lamotrigine does not seem to cause any QTC prolongation. It's been rarely associated with Brugada syndrome, sudden cardiac death, and sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. And it is associated with some mild QRS widening. So how should you think about this for your patients? Well, for patients without a history of any conduction disorder, ventricular arrhythmia, or a personal or family history of Brugada syndrome, no EKG monitoring is indicated. You really do not need to worry about additional monitoring for patients who don't have significant risk factors. Now, for patients with a history of a conduction disorder or a ventricular arrhythmia, then it probably makes sense to check a baseline EKG and a follow-up EKG once steady-state dosing is reached, if you're in a setting where that's feasible. For patients with a known bundle branch block or patients who have a family history of Brugada syndrome, those are both situations where the risk is increased a little bit. And for those patients, I might consider an agent that doesn't widen the QRS interval at all. So that could be something like valproate or oxcarbazepine. An important caveat is that for patients with a known history of Brugada syndrome, I think lamotrigine is probably contraindicated, and I would not use it in those patients. What if you have somebody who's already on lamotrigine, but now that patient is concerned about cardiac risks, or maybe you're concerned about cardiac risks? The most important message here is to not reflexively stop the lamotrigine due to theoretical concerns. You want to conduct a really careful risk-benefit analysis. You want to think about the risks of destabilization if you were to stop or attempt to switch the lamotrigine. And if you conduct a really careful risk-benefit analysis, and if you're really unsure, then I would obtain an EKG and determine if any QRS widening exists. If not, and again, if the patient does not have other significant risk factors, then you're best course of action is probably to continue the lamotrigine. Remember that there's no evidence to suggest that reducing the dose of lamotrigine will mitigate the cardiac risk. So you don't want to bump somebody down in dose as a reflexive safety mechanism because it's not clear that that actually is going to protect them anymore and it will likely increase their risk for other adverse psychiatric outcomes. So to summarize some key points in this section, for patients without a history of any conduction disorder, ventricular arrhythmia, or any personal or family history of Brugada syndrome, no EKG monitoring is indicated. For patients who do have a history of a conduction disorder or a ventricular arrhythmia, then it would be reasonable to check a baseline EKG and a follow-up EKG once steady-state dosing is reached, if you're in a setting where that's feasible. For patients with a known bundle branch block or a family history of Brugada syndrome, you should probably be more cautious. You might consider agents that don't widen the QRS interval, things like valproate or oxcarbazepine. And finally, we don't recommend using lamotrigine in patients with known Brugada syndrome. That should be considered a contraindication.